Okay, hi, hello everyone. This is Yue Shi from the University of Adelaide in Australia. Today, I will present the paper Heuristic Strategy for Solving Complexity Interacting Stockpile Blending Problem with Transconstraint. First, I will introduce what is the stockpile blending problems. So this picture shows the upstream of the supply chain in mining engineering. So we can see from picture that we first uh, mine the ore or material from the open pit mine or underground mine, then hoard those ore from mine part to the stockpiles. So the stockpiles are used, so the stockpiles are used to store material in mining engineering. The next step is to generate some parcels and those parcels can claim material from different stockpiles. And after generate those parcels, we send them to the mill part, and then they will suffer some mechanical or chemical processing. And in the end, we can obtain our final production, which should match the market plan or the customer requirement. So we can see that the strategy of generating those parcels is influenced by the mine plan, mill part, and the market plans. Here is the outline of the pre today's presentations. First of all is the motivations. The stockpile planning problem we discuss in this paper plays a significant role in the open pit mine production scheduling problems. And it is a kind of decision problem involving how many volumes of ore within the stockpile limits should be claimed in each period and for which parcels the ore should be sent. And motivated by the uncertainty in the geological input data, which affects the optimizations, we consider the stockpile blending problem with uncertainty in material grade. Here, the material grade is a professional name which denotes how many tonnage of the specific mental in the stockpiles or in the discussed uh, block or material. Pass or, or, uh, or the block or the puzzle. And since the uh, chance constraint programming can be used to solve the optimization problem under various uh, uh, uncertainties, we apply the chance constraint programming in the stockpile blending problem. In the end, we will investigate the performance of the e algorithms on solving the problem. And the stockpile blending problems which aims to maximize the volume of valuable metal, for example, copper, silver, golden, and others. And in this paper, we only consider the copper. And the constraint can come in from three parts, the mine plan, mill feed, and demands of the uh, downstream customers. Before considering the uncertainty in the input data, we first present the determinist model of the stockpile blending problem. This table lists all the notations of the decision variables, parameters that were used for the model, and you can check the details and explanations of those denotes in paper. And the object functions, which aims to maximize the sum of copper, sum of the copper, sum of copper in the final productions. And there's three components to components for the object functions. First one is the tonnage of each parcel. Second one is the material grade of parcels. Third one is the copper recovery rate of each parcel. And to be noted here, in this paper, I only consider the time durations of these problems is one month. And in each month, it can contain several parcels. And we assume in each durations, we only we can only generate one parcel. So in the following discuss, one, uh, one month can contain several durations or time periods, and the one durations corresponding to one parcel. And now we discuss the, we introduce the constraints we have for this model. First category of the constraints is from the decision variables. This one is just as I discussed before, is the durations. So we assume the sum of the durations of the parcel planned in one month should no, no more than the available duration of this month. Second one is the 
decision vectors of each parcels because this XPS is a friction of parcel P claimed from stockpile S, so which is a continued decision variables can take in value between zero to one. So we force the sum of these decision variables for one parcels should equal to one. The second category of constraints is from the downstream customers, which are the which limited the value of the real value of the tonal concentrate of each parcel should no more or less than this one than the given threshold. So this one is the tightest constraints we have in this model. And the third constraint is from the stockpiles because we assume that oral hold from the uh, from the mine part to the stockpiles happened at the beginning of every month and we also assume that the material mixing homogeneously in the stockpiles then the function eight and nine used to update the material grade of stockpiles and the inventory of the stockpiles as discussed in these functions we can find that only the first parcel or the first period in the first par parcel or the first period in this month the material grade is update according to the oral sending from my part. In the following periods, the material grade is similar to the first one. And the last category of constraints coming from the mill feed, they are a lower bound of the copper of the copper grade of parcels and an upper bound of the flooring recovery rate of each parcels. Uh, because this determinist model is already so complex and hard to searching the optimal solutions, even to find the feasible solutions in the search space. So we introduced these two, two repair operators to limit the search space of the problem. First one is talk, we talk about the constraint, this constraints by using this decision variable normalized approach. So this approach first calculate the sum of variables of one parcel and divided the decision variable of this parcel by the sum, by the sum of them. So after applying this operator, all these solutions can guarantee this constraint. The second constraint we want to tackle is this tightest tonal concentrate constraints and by observing the details and by observing the determinist model we find that the real value of the tonal concentrate of each parcel is uh, influenced directly by the duration of this parcel so we use this duration repelled operator which is a binary search process and it can find the duration of each parcels to ensure these constraints now we're considering the uncertainty in the geological input data, which is the material grade from all material grades of the overall from sending from mine part to the stockpiles. And the first of all, I will introduce what introduce the chance constraint optimization problems, whose resulting decision ensures the probability of complaining with the constraints and confidence of being feasible. And this model is the general formulations of the of an optimization problem under uncertainty. It objective to maximize or minimize the finish function and subject to a constraints. After applying the chance constraint programming, we can have this chance constraints, which is the probability of complaining with the constraint h. It should is give uh, better than or greater than or equal to the given threshold, the alpha. And then we go back to the stockpile blending problems. In this paper, we only discuss these two constraints. And in order to apply the chance constraint programming, we define these two additional notations. And then we reformulate these two constraints to chance constraints like this. However, even with, however, for the statistic stockpile blending problem, even we reformulate the constraint to chance constraint, it is still complexity and cannot be solved directly. So we're trying to obtain or generate some surrogate functions to replace the chance constraints. Here we discuss, we use the 
one side chapters in inequalities with these two functions. And we assume the material grace of uh, material grace of oral that hold from stop hold from mine to stop piles are independent and statistic with expectation and variance. So the period though, if the period is the first one in the month, then according to the copper uh, according to the material grade, so a grade we can have the expectation like we can calculate the expectations and the variance like these functions. Then for the following periods in this month, we can have the expectations and the variance as these two functions, which is exactly the same to the first period. Then we're trying to generate some surrogate functions by applying trap shafts in quality. And we set the threshold of the Cooper grade like this and calculate the lambda, combine this, we can obtain the surrogate functions, which can be used to replace the trans constraints in the model. Similar to the Cooper grade constraints, we have the flooring recovery rate constraints like this. Here is the surrogate of the uh, flooring trans constraints. Then because we want to investigate the performance of differential evolution algorithms on solving the stock pipeline problems. And uh, with considering the uncertainties, we we'll first introduce different functions for the determinist models. Here is the finite functions. It has several components, two components in these functions, and each component corresponding to one constraint as we introduced before and the last component is current is equal to the finished values and in this fit functions we need to minimize the component uvqg and maximize w and o and we optimize this function in lexicographic order then we propose the finished function for model with chance constraints since we only have two chance constraints so we only need to represent these two components into in the uh, finished functions. And then we have three finished functions with considering the trans constraints. The first one only considering the Cooper trans constraint, and second one only considering the flooring trans constraint, and the third one considering both of them. And this one, this is the D algorithm we use in this paper, which is a classical D differential evolution algorithms, because we only discuss the stock pipeline problems in one month. And in each month, it can contain several parcels, and each parcel can claim material from several stockpiles. And so here is how we construct the decision variable, uh, the analyze the decision vectors. And this is the mutation operator we use. And this one is the crossover operator we use. Now, going to our experiment investigations. Due to some business security, we are not able to publish the real data we use in this project. So this table lists the recommend value and the recommend range for the for all the uh, parameter we use in these problems. And you can, you can find the details in the appendix of the paper, in the of the paper, and then we just and we uh, create three instances according by randomly select value from the from these tables, and you can find the details of those instances in the appendix of the paper too. And in this in three instance, we assume the material grades are all conform to normal distributions and set the threshold of the of two chance constraints by equal to these three values. And we run and in the experiment test, we run the algorithm 30 independent times and the content and finding the mean values. And all the algorithm have 10,000 generations and 10 populations. This table lists the finished value obtained with only considering one chance constraint in the finished functions. And by observing the bar chart, we find when the value of alpha Cooper decrease, the result will increase. However, when the, the, however, the value of alpha flooring doesn't influence the result. And when, when the alpha Cooper is tight, 
for example, equal to 0 0.99, DD algorithms cannot get a pure feasible population in the last generations. Moreover, in the instance three, which is the complex instance under consider, it is hard to obtain a feasible population in the last generations. Then this table lists the finished value obtained with two chains constraints and consider them to, uh, in one time. So we find that with the same alpha Cooper, the value of alpha flooring doesn't affect the result. And with the same alpha flooring, the objective value increase while, while alpha Cooper decrease. It is similar to, to uh, it's similar when we consider only copper constant, uh, trans constraints. So there are no significant difference between the result obtained by only considering Cooper trans constraint and considering multi trans constraint. So and in most case, when we consider both, uh, in most case, the result obtained by single trans constraint are better than the multi trans constraint. Then we are going to the conclusions. So the stock pipe blending problems we consider in this paper is really an important component in the mine scheduling problems. Because as we know, mining is a really expensive uh, industrial field and a little bit improvement in the mining engineering problem can correspond to up more than $10 million. And motivated by the uncertainty in the geological input data of the problem, we apply the trans constraint of programming into the problem. Moreover, we incorporate the trap shafts in quality to tackle the trans constraints. And for further study, it could be interesting to deep investigate the relationship between different trans constraints. And we need to develop more realistic benchmark to can be used to test the performance between different approaches, since we only discuss the, the algorithms in these papers. And that's it. Thank you very much.